Hello, fourth graders. This is our book, If You Traveled West in a Covered Wagon. I'm going to be reading to you today pages 5 to 19 and a little introduction to our Pioneer Unit. And you have a Google Doc in the assignment that you are going to be answering some questions. So you probably want to have that available to you so you know what questions I'm going to be asking or you're going to be having to answer on that Google Doc. So you might want to read those questions first and then listen to this or if you have a printer print it out and follow along whatever's easier for you. Okay here we go. Introduction. 150 years ago there was no railroad that went all across the country. There were no cars or buses or airplanes. The only way to travel across the country was to ride a horse, or if you went with your family, to travel in a covered wagon. In the 1840s and 1850s, thousands of people traveled west. So if you lived at that time, there was a chance you might have traveled in a covered wagon. This book is about traveling and living in a covered wagon. It tells what it was like to be one of the early pioneers to travel to Oregon. So here is where many people started in Independence, Missouri, and they traveled all through these states to get to Oregon. Some people chose to move down into California. What was the Oregon Territory? In the 1840s, the Oregon Territory was made up of the land that is now the states of Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and parts of Montana and Wyoming. Back then, nobody knew if the Oregon Territory was going to be part of America or if it was going to be part of England. Most countries had built forts in the territory. At the forts, trappers and Indians sold animal furs and skins, such as beaver, marten, and muskrat, and bought tools and supplies. America and England agreed that Oregon would belong to the country that could get more of its people living in the new land. So to make Oregon part of America, Many Americans had to go there to live. Oregon finally became a state in 1859. Why did some people want to travel all the way to Oregon? Back in the 1840s, you heard about faraway places by reading newspapers or hearing stories told by visitors who came from distant places. This is how people learned of a land on the other side, the west side of the Rocky Mountains. That land was called Oregon. Stories told about Oregon made it sound like a magical place. Flowers bloomed all year. The land was good for farming, and there was plenty of land that you could get for free. There were tall trees and big forests and rivers and streams filled with fish. So the very name Oregon made people think of starting new adventures. What was a covered wagon? A covered wagon was a wagon with a white rounded top made of cloth. The cloth was called canvas and was rubbed with oil to make it waterproof. It was stretched over big wooden hoops that were bent from one side of the wagon to the other. There were drawstrings in the front and back of the canvas. If you pulled the strings tight, you could close the ends up to keep out the rain or wind. The canvas could also be rolled up on long sides so that you could get a breeze on a hot day. The bottom part of the covered wagon looked like an ordinary wagon with one difference. The front wheels were smaller than the back wheels. That made it easier to make sharp turns. Inside the wagon there were hooks on the wooden hoops. On them you could hang milk cans, guns, bonnets, spoons, dolls, jackets, and anything else there was room for. Underneath the wagon, between the black wheels, there was a hook with a bucket full of grease hanging down from it. The grease was rubbed on the wheels so that they would turn smoothly. In the front of the wagon, there was a wooden board to sit on. The covered wagon was pulled by oxen or mules or horses. Many pioneers used oxen because they were stronger than mules and horses. Covered wagons were also called prairie schooners. Can you guess why? A schooner is a boat that sails on the seas. 
The big white canvas cover on the wagon looked like a huge sail. And if the grass was tall enough to hide the wheels, the wagon looked like a big boat sailing across the grassy green waves. What was a wagon train? A wagon train was a group of covered wagons that went together on the long trip west. The wagons would travel in a single line so that from a distance they looked like a slow moving train. If the trail was wide enough, they would sometimes spread out to get away from each other's dust. At night, the wagons would form a big circle with the front of one wagon facing the back of another. Children would often play inside the wagon circle after dinner and just before bedtime. Did anybody lead the wagon train? Yes. When pioneers gathered their wagons together at the start of the trip, they elected a leader. This leader or captain would blow the horn or whistle to wake everybody up in the morning. He was also the one who decided when you would stop for lunch and at the end of the day and end the day. The captain with a few others would often ride a little in front of the wagon train to see what was ahead on the trail. Then they would ride up and down the wagon line to make sure that everything was okay. Usually there was a council of about six to 10 people who would meet at night with the captain to talk about how the trip was going. Each person would report on different problems. A wagon wheel had broken and the family needed someone to help make a new one. Somebody's flour barrel had gotten all wet and muddy crossing the river and the family needed to get some flour from anyone who could spare a little. A group of men had to be organized for the next, next day's buffalo hunt. The captain and the council would plan who would stand guard at night to protect the animals and warn the people if anything was wrong. What was a trail guide? Some wagon trains hired trail guides. These were people who had made the trip before and knew the way. Usually they had been fur trappers and traders out west for many years. When they came back to the east, they had special knowledge that was very helpful to the pioneers. The guides would know the best places to cross the rivers. They knew how far you had traveled and how much more you had to go. And they taught the pioneers some of the tricks of the trail, which you can read about in this book on page 73. Some of the guides even wrote books about how to travel west. This meant that the captain and the council of a wagon train could study a guidebook and learn about the best way to go. One of the most famous guides was a man named Dr. Marcus Whitman. He was a doctor and a missionary. He and his wife, Narcissa, built a home in the Oregon Territory. If you look on the map on page seven, you'll see where they lived. Dr. Whitman was a trail guide for the first big wagon train to go to Oregon in 1843. It was made up of about 120 wagons. Because he had made the trip before, he was very helpful to the pioneers who were going for the first time. Dr. Whitman believed that the wagons could go over the mountains in Oregon. No covered wagons had ever gone across those mountains before, but the pioneers trusted Dr. Whitman and they made it. What kinds of people traveled west? Many different kinds of people went to live in the new place called Oregon. Farmers wanted to go to find good new land. Storekeepers wanted to go to set up new shops. There were carpenters and bakers and blacksmiths. There were missionaries and shoemakers and artists and lawyers. There were doctors and teachers and almost anyone else you can think of who might want to try something new. You were especially lucky if people who knew many of these different things were in your wagon train. Then it was like carrying your whole town with you on the trip. Sometimes people who didn't start out with you on the trip were there when you arrived at your new home. That's because babies were born on the trip. If you had a new sister or brother on the trip, the wagon train would stop for a day or two. Usually several of the women knew how to help when babies were born and there in the middle of a new country would be a new person. The travelers, including the new babies, were called pioneers because they were the first group of people to move into a new land and make a new home.